Comic-Con, a Comic-Con pleasure to bring out these two actors. You want to try to, let's try to say their names in unison. We'll start with Jordan and Tatiana. Please welcome from Warner Black, Jordan and Rose and Tatiana. start with the first time that we brought you guys out, I think if anything, was last year at Toronto Comic Con, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And we were in, in a different room with a, a definitely smaller crowd than this. The lineup for this panel, I'm sure there are people out there who are very upset that they didn't get to, uh, to be in this room. So what a difference a year makes and, and how are you guys feeling right now compared to this time last year? Still shaking. <laughs> <laughs> Trying not to be my best. Yeah. It's, oh, oh my God, it's amazing. In my heart. Yeah. Same here. How do you feel? Uh, yeah, it's going. It's going. <laughs> what was it like for both of you going into season two? Now you know you're comfortable with your characters, and you know with so much hype around, did you feel the pressure at all going into season two? Uh, I, I think initially, maybe for like the first week, there was that sort of, oh God, everyone's going to see this, and oh my God, people are watching, and then as we kind of worked our way back into it and started stretching the characters we sort of forgot that there was an audience and, and we tried really really hard to approach it the same way that we did first season which is just kind of pretend that no one's watching and push the envelope yeah and do cool stuff and keep like as much as there's, there's a new ease because we know these characters it's still like expanding them and, mm -hmm. and trying to challenge them and change them and the writers did such an amazing job this season of never kind of falling back on what what worked last season or, or, or correcting, you know, whatever. It, it was just totally bold new storytelling and, and really amazing to read that every day through, so, yeah. How was Jordan on set? Season two is still super annoying to be around. Still <laughs> doubly as annoying. <laughs> it's just like high school. Yeah. <laughs> What's it like, you, you finished shooting season two now, what's it like getting scripts on this show? Because as we watch the show, and I'm sure this is similar to everybody, there are so many holy crap moments, there are so many jaw drop moments. But for you guys as actors, is it the same when you get a script? Like, do you get a script and does your, your jaw hit the floor, or what's it like? Yeah. yeah, usually, especially by the fifth act, by the last, like, usually by the by the tenth page, there's, or by the, the last, and wow, I, I know math. <laughs> <laughs> this is why I'm an actor, people. Yeah. <laughs> Usually by like the last ten pages, there's it, it, my jaw is hanging open. Yeah, and it's been working its way up there throughout the rest of the yeah the script. And it's just that cool thing that that happens where where you don't know where something's going because it could go yeah. nine hundred different ways, and it's never the easy way, which is the the best thing. I'm sure we've all got our favorite moments from season one, but for you guys, season one, what, what was your standout moment in the show? Oh gosh, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> I also speak English. <laughs> what is wrong with you today? I'm really nervous. <laughs> really? Are you nervous? I do. I get really nervous before these things. There's judgment and we cameras. Love you. But no, it's all up. <laughs> well, oh, validation, yes. <laughs> The train platform scene. You oh said yeah, that was like pretty big. Yeah, but I said that so many times. <laughs> it's true. It's old. But that was like a big deal. Just shooting the first scene of the series and and having dreamt about it for so long before I got the part and, and kind of fantasizing about it and, and wishing and wishing to play Sarah and then finally being on that platform freezing cold in little shorts. No, and just you know in the costume with the crew and we were making this thing that, that I dreamt about and it was just, yeah. I, I remember texting Graham, who's right there, our creator. <laughs> I was in like a coffee shop before we went, to, before we shot that and I was like, I'm bawling publicly right now <laughs> thinking about shooting this tonight. So yeah, it was pretty special. After that scene, did you pitch shooting season two at like an all-inclusive resort in Hawaii? <laughs> yeah, I keep pitching that. They don't, they won't bite. Well, for some reason it doesn't fit the tone or something. I don't know. Can we talk season two for a minute? Because yeah. uh, I've been on set and I have been spoiled uh, about so many things, awesome things that are going to happen. So for this crowd, what is the most difficult uh, spoiler to keep in? <laughs> 
Very clever. <laughs> I had to try, guys. I had to try. But overall, let me ask you this then, seriously. Um, I know you can only answer in vague uh, words, but I guess, what will catch people off guard? What will surprise people the most about this next season? What did we say at, um, at TCA? Season one was conception, season two was evolution. Ooh. You said soundbite. <laughs> I think the coolest thing is, is how the characters are gonna change. We, you think you know, but you don't. And the worlds really expand. All of the all of the separate worlds that we got to know last season um, start to really get detailed and really expand. We get to we have so many amazing guest stars and new recurring characters on the show that are just incredible actors that are so lucky we got yeah. you know uh, who wanted to come play and and that you know those those kind of amazing genre shifts that we have as far as Allison's world versus you know. Sarah's world, um, it, we really el elaborate on those, and yeah, yeah, that just well, cleared out completely. <laughs> Well, I know what you guys must be going through keeping some of this stuff in. Yeah. You know, my Anxiety attacks every day. <laughs> I wake up in cold sweats. I'm compulsively eating. <laughs> Is it super? What's the secrecy like on set? I mean, do they have your DNA? Will they clone you and like do terrible things to the clone if you spoil anything? Or what's the secrecy like? I'm pretty sure it's just like the. I'm pretty sure it's just a hit. It's just kind of a straight up hit. <laughs> just, just smack on the head. No, I was talking about a death hit. <laughs> Greg's <laughs> <laughs> here right now with a sniper on both of us. <laughs> uh, let's open it up to the floor for questions. Just uh, toss up your hand there, friends. Hey! Hey, hello again. Hi, hello. Um, congrats on your Did everyone hear that question? It was about the uh, award shows, which we have yet to mention and congratulate Jordan on his win. I, I, um, I, I think I can say this. Someone was refilling my, my wine glass all night, so I don't remember much of it. <laughs> <laughs> they just kept coming around, and by the time I, and then, you know, the blood rushes to your head because you, you win and you don't expect it. I really didn't expect it. I'm not lying right now. I had no idea that I was going to win. I was shocked. And then we between, expected the, it. Yeah. <laughs> between the adrenaline and um, the wine. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was a really fun night, though. I was really very humbled. And that sounds so trite, but it's true. Yeah, for those who don't know, at the Canadian Screen Awards on Wednesday, Orphan Black, uh, that was just you know the, the first award night. Uh, it took home eight wins at the Canadian Screen Awards, including Jordan. <laughs> awards in total, and that's of course in addition to the nomination at the Golden Globes, the TCA uh, wins uh, People's Choice, so I mean it, the list goes on and on, so congratulations. Yeah. Thank you. It's awesome. Did you guys envision it, having this this amount of, of accolades and, and acclaim when you were shooting season one? Did you anticipate that it would be embraced in the way that it has, you know, internationally? No. Not at all. I think, well, for me at least, it was just like, how do we do this? How do we, it was so in the moment. The creation of it and, and the and the exploration of it was so kind of all-consuming. I, I never thought of it going out, and then like leading up to the premiere, I was like, oh shit, it's <laughs> gonna be seen, and I don't know what it's gonna look like. I don't know how people were, will respond because I think timing is such a, an important thing, and whether the audience is is there and wants to see this kind of show or not, you know, because it's it's a it's a, a very specific show, you know, it's not super safe, and and so. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't think we were gonna, I don't know, I didn't know. I, I feel like a lot of the moments in the script too were just sort of like, a, how are we gonna do this? Yeah. How is this gonna work? How are we gonna, where, where are we gonna start and how are we gonna pull it off? But no, I, we, we didn't think that anyone was gonna see it. And the only reason people did see it is because like five people saw it. And they told five people, they told five people. Of course, Thank their, you. their parents <laughs> watch it. Well, just to add to the list of accolades, the uh, Constellation yeah. Awards, also known as the Canadian Sci-Fi Awards, were just announced, and Orphan Black nominated for four awards, including both of you, for your performances. Oh. So, uh, here's an official envelope, baby. Uh, more from the floor. Hello, sir, in the middle. 
Uh, question for both. Uh, what is your favorite line? But for tab, what's your favorite line for each quote? The question was about favorite line. Um, by far. Does your daddy have a drink, Johnny? <laughs> That, that was not even a line, that was from my brain. <laughs> that was an ad-lib, that's the big surprise about that. And that has been memed more than any other line of feelings <laughs> everywhere. God. Probably something from Al Allison has so many. I think Big Boo Blowies. <laughs> it's a big, it's a big one. Um, uh, God. Uh, it's a joke, who did I play? <laughs> working and shopping. <laughs> that was awesome. Uh, God. Kasima. Kasima. Um, something, something. What did she say? <laughs> Funny little thing. Kind of always sorry. Huh? Kind of always late, kind of always sorry. Oh yeah, that's a good one. I'm kind of always late, so I'm kind of always sorry. Uh, I love that your hand starts going. Yeah, I'm like, uh, Alison, I did. Sarah is, what did she say? Something to feel like. Um, <laughs> Oh, Sarah's what? Yeah, what is Sarah saying? She crap her Lululemons. She crap her Lululemons. That's a great one. Yeah. I just like that moment in the shed when she's like, bitch. <laughs> There's a few of those bitch moments. There's another bitch moment too. Was There's Kasima. Bitch moment. Mm -hmm. oh, I remember when I was on the phone. Yeah. I like that. Um, and then who else did I play? Rachel. What does she say? Some big long speech that I'll never remember. <laughs> Rachel's probably yeah. I don't know. <laughs> so there you go, that's that amazing answer. <laughs> I know it's a question you've answered before, but I, mean, I think it's fascinating to all of us as fans of the show. How do you how do you keep them straight in your head? You've talked before in interviews about listening to different types of music, but I mean, how do you put up those silos in your mind and, and switch gears between them? It's like, it's just keying back into that thing that I think all actors understand and all children understand and I think a lot of people here understand is that sense of of play of make-believe of of if, um, of going to the place of insanity you know what I mean where you can where you can pretend you're somebody and you believe you're that person based on how you look based on how people like Jordan does amazing work on his side when, when I'm Allison or Sarah or Kasima and giving me a completely different uh, dynamic treating me differently, improvising with me differently, being physical with me differently. And so so, so much of it is, is just the reflection of, of my fellow actors with me and how they respond to me when I walk on set. And the crew does it too. And, you know, Philip will be like, oh yeah, and, you know, Allison comes back and then there's all these comments about that. You know, and it, it's, <laughs> it's very much this kind of collaborative thing. And I feel like the writing is so strong. None of the characters speak the same way. Um, there's just a organic sort of thing that comes out of saying the lines, you know, that it just sort of is there. Uh, out of all the clones, who would you say you, your personality relates to most, and mm -hmm. who's your complete opposite? I'd say Kasima is probably the closest to me as my hands go, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, just as far as her kind of passion for what she loves, you know, and, and her sort of fascination with people, and, and uh, yeah, there's just like a, a she's, she's not as burdened down by, I mean, this season's a, a different thing for her. Obviously, she's sort of facing her mortality, so she's in a different place, but she has a likeness about her that I think I, I relate to, and, um, uh, and the most opposite is probably Rachel. Rachel? Yeah. She's so choleric. Yeah. Choleric? Yeah. What does that mean? You know, it's like buttoned up, keeping people at a distance, mm. very sort of A-type, and I'm sure there's a proper definition that I can't remember. I mean, yeah, a severity, severity, too. I learned the A word. severity, yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah, I like that word. But she is very clear. Like <laughs> yeah, there's just like a, a, I don't know, like a quiet power that I would never feel safe standing in myself. Yeah. Back to the floor, more hands, right there. Hello. Ooh, 
Did everyone hear that? I just thought of all the Archie characters. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, could we put their heads on different... That would sort of I work. think it's safe to say Felix would be Aquaman. <laughs> And if anyone doesn't get that reference, please watch Family Guy. <laughs> oh god. Can you help me with these? There's um, too many of them. Okay, Helena. Does it feel unfair, Tap, that you have to answer seven yeah, times? Yeah, it's really unfair. <laughs> it's really, I wish the other girls had showed up. Uh, uh, Not Great, you can help us with this, too. You have an idea. I can tell your foot's bouncing. <laughs> Graham, do you want to come up here? Yeah, Graham. Come up here. Yeah. Yeah. Show co-creator and executive producer, Graham Hansen. Characters that uh, Jordan and Tad have played so far were superheroes. Which superheroes would they be? Comic book superheroes, I suppose, or comic book characters? Well, I think we can go with a Allison as Veronica for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> totally. yeah, Sarah's Tank Girl all the way. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, keep going. Mm, Helena? <laughs> it's really cool. She's, She's kind of like Rorschach from Watchmen. <laughs> Animal from the Muppets. <laughs> um, and Kasima? No. Yeah, she's like Banner. Yeah, Bruce, Bruce Banner. Banner. <laughs> <laughs> They're like whoever's a doctor. He's a doctor. Doctor Octopus? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's Doc Ock. That's who she is. Uh, Graham, I want to ask you. Um, and I did an industry panel with yourself and with your with your co-creator John Foss the other day, and I asked you this, and I was fascinated by the answer. Can you talk about the, the casting process? Because you did mention that it really clicked for you, both you and John, when you saw Tatiana and Jordan together doing these lines. Can you talk about seeing them together act for the first time and, and why it clicked so perfectly to you? Yeah, that's right. Well, it was, it was so, obviously such a crazy uh, and intense audition process. We had to look at at so many people, and of course, Tat was in the running all the way along. It really, really, but for these guys, it was probably the worst kind of audition you can go to. There's like 19 executives in the room, cool. and it takes place over two days. And Tat had to play, she had to play Sarah. Sarah is Beth, Allison Cosima. We didn't have very many scripts at the time yet. And oh yeah, the German who lasted like 30 seconds. <laughs> But we, we had to see whether you whether it, 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 these guys could do the German accent. And so um, the other thing we did was bring a bunch of Felixes to town to try against the possible Tatianas. I mean, yes, that's what I mean. And, and uh, um, the whole thing really came together in, in the moment when Jordan and Tatiana came in to do it. And they had not even met. Isn't that right? They no. hadn't even said hello. Wow. No, we hadn't even no. talked. That's and they, they came into the room and they were, it was Felix and Sarah. They had this total familial type <laughs> bond going on. And it right away, for all those 19 people, I think everybody, I think it landed for sure for both, both these guys. It landed it right there within the first scene. Wow. It was a cool moment. It was cool for us. It was, for me. It was, just it was awful for me. <laughs> <laughs> another another so cool tidbit is um, Evelyn Brochu was in that final group of people. <coughs> we wrote, we liked her so much we wrote her apart. Mm -hmm. She's so amazing. She's really cool. See, it's on that film. I have not either. I'm telling you to without seeing it. I have to the floor for some more questions. But down the aisle. <laughs> Allison and then Allison would just 
totally kick her in the kick her. I think Allison would, do, would like do a low blow. Allison would gift wrap her. <laughs> and then mail her somewhere. Yeah. Graham, who would you write wins that fight? Helena. <laughs> a follow-up to that question because something occurred to me watching the first episode of the show and that is no one is safe or at least none of the clones are safe because though we were introduced to Sarah as the you know pivotal character of the show I realized oh she could be killed off by episode three and Pat obviously wouldn't have to leave the show having all these other clones that she plays and they all have their fan bases there are people who are team Kazima and you know it doesn't necessarily mean that Sarah's the the favorite. So is there a potential that we might say goodbye to some of the, the more central clones? No. <laughs> yes. You went there. Sort of. <laughs> uh, Graham, how did you approach uh, writing and putting season two together? I mean, does, does, does the focus shift a little bit? Um, or And where does it pick up? Uh, well, it picks up right away um uh you know we really like our cliffhangers we like them at the end of every show and even at the end of every act so um kira's missing and uh there's no messing around for sarah um approaching the season um you know we just john and i sort of get together before we get together with the writers and we talk about our general ideas and um we just continually push each other to do things that we haven't seen before to keep the to keep the storytelling surprising and John has his fetishes and I have mine and we push them forward we push against each other that sounds yeah. really odd <laughs> but that's how it works um, and, I knew the kimono was a fetish yeah. <laughs> John Fawcett's idea um, so uh, and then we you know then we then we stick six really smart writers in a room for at least three or four months before we ever start shooting, trying to get ahead of the game and, uh, and get a big, mean, nasty plan that's gonna excite everybody.